comrades, comrades from all over the U.S. Uh, were essential in putting this together, so that when we are at J20, this is going to be the literature that we pass out. Now, I think we got about 12,500 of these ordered, so the literature is not J20 specific. So, this is going to be something that we can use over and over again as as we uh, as we go on through the struggle. So, I'm going to go ahead and pass it out in, in two different stacks here, if we can just circulate it. Oh, yes. <coughs> So I'd like to just speak briefly about the, the last um, fact-finding mission that we had to DC. Uh, I was there with uh, Sarah Flounders and Sharon Black and Scott um, from Philly. And we spent some time uh, discussing with different local organizers how we could plug in or how we could um, participate in a effective and organized manner with the already existing infrastructure that exists in DC. So there's a group of activists that are calling themselves Disrupt J20. They're mainly local, and I believe that many of them are Occupy veterans. So as they live in DC, and as they work politically in DC, these are also the same people who were um, featured, I guess, like in November for protesting the neo-Nazi conference that happened right after Donald Trump's election. Um, so we've been we've been speaking with these people to try and see exactly like what's already set up on the ground and what it is that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, so that we don't have to do it again. That includes things like jail support. Uh, that includes things like uh, security. Uh, there are some local groups. I believe Seeds of Peace are going to be assisting us with food and beverage throughout the day. Uh, but in general, I believe that the last um, that the last fact finding mission that we had down in DC was really successful. We also were in Baltimore for a minute. I will be actually headed to Baltimore on Saturday to take part in the Unity March that is going to kick off the week of action that happens before J20. Uh, it's going to be about reclaiming Dr. King's legacy as a freedom fighter uh, and also to save Lexington Market, which is a historic market in Baltimore. But I will be going down there um, to try and see how things are going on the ground from both Baltimore and DC and assist as needed um, in person. Uh, we also have this really wonderful front page of the newspaper, which I'm guessing that everyone's going to take home with them. But this sort of reflects, again, like what we have on the handbill that are being passed out right now. I would also like to go ahead and just briefly read some of the signs that we have put together, both the PPA and Workers' World. So let's start with the PPA signs. We've got, on this side we have, we still demand universal health care for all. On this side, we have black and brown trans lives matter. On this sign, we have alt-right equals neo-Nazis, just so no one is confused. On this side, we have the classic black lives matter, which you can't print on enough signs as far as I'm concerned. We've got, this one is black and brown and indigenous people will resist, which is absolutely fact. We're going to be with them in the streets. And then um, this one here is, uh, it's, it's fuck Nazis, but this is the TV friendly version so that now it's going to get on television. Everyone will get it. <laughs> we then have, this one is stop the war on black America. So nice, we said it twice, each one, so. <laughs> then we've got, as well, uh, we've got fight racism, not Russia and China. As everyone has been able to see by like the bourgeois media recently, it's that every single thing that's going wrong with this country now is because of Russia. If it's not because of people of color or trans or LGBTQ people or women, it happens to be Russia's fault. None of it is ever the ruling class's fault, right, in this country. And so right now it's like, as, as other people have said much more eloquently from this space, that they've actually found a way to attack Trump from the right. Yeah. by drumming up imperialism, by drumming up this warmongering scheme of trying to, to go after and blame, you know, it's the same kind of xenophobia and it's the same kind of, you know, frank racism that we, that we encounter with Donald Trump's supporters talking about the wall or talking about deportations. We've also got this one, which is a classic um, fight for socialism. 
because I think that some people are a little bit confused about how one gets to socialism nowadays, and I think it's important to, to point out that the only way that we're going to be able to battle against this racist reaction tidal wave coming at us is through mass action in the streets. It's not going to be about waiting for four years. It's not going to be about waiting for two years. It's not going to be about waiting for one year. It's not going to be about working with the Democratic Party. It's not going to be about you know whether or not you check one box or another box on your voter registration ballot. It's going to be about mass coordinated working class and oppressed action against this kind of um, nasty, nasty tidal wave of bullshit. Then we've also got here, extra sign. here's another PPA sign that we have here. Blame capitalism, not immigrants. Thank you. I mean, how many years have we been having to say this? My God, it's been like forever in this country. It's like, oh, this is all that they can really drum up with people. I mean, this is a settler nation anyway. Like, how dare we? Then we've got, again, but this is in a different color. So these are some of the Workers' World signs. We've got the Black Lives Matter sign here as well, laid out, with workers.org here on the bottom so that people can visit our website. We've got this one here. Indict, convict, send those killer cops to jail. And then we've got this one here. The whole damn system. Guilty! Yeah. Newsflash, right? I like it because it kind of looks like a bit like a newspaper <laughs> board or something. But anyway, so these are just some of the signs that we have uh, that we're going to be bringing. And we also are still doing slogans. We're still laying out signs. But basically, I think the Workers' World's one are going to use a lot of this kind of uh, formatting. We're also going to have some really nice um, foam core boards that are being put together um, as well. So yeah, we're going to bring a ton of these down to DC. To speak a little bit more seriously about something that, that has come to uh, our attention today regarding the Department of Homeland Security's newest uh, press release that they have about transportation into and out of DC. As everyone in this room knows, like the state can do whatever the hell that they want, right? They don't really respect anybody's rights. They don't respect people's lives even, so why would they respect anyone's rights? Uh, the Department of Homeland Security and other agencies are making it as difficult as possible for people to get into Washington, D.C. Uh, so far, they have said that there will be no bus drop-offs near metro stations in D.C., in Virginia, and in Maryland. That there will also be many, 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 many more closures to roads and bridges and tunnels into and out of the city. They're basically doing everything that they can in their power to get all of the buses and all of the people aimed at RFK Stadium, which is a comfortable distance from all of the action, right? Like they wanna, they wanna do everything that they can to prevent us from getting there and saying absolutely not, we refuse to be governed by such a racist, sexist, monster. Uh, but it doesn't really matter to us either if they can, they can go ahead and say we can't drop anybody off at metro stations or they can, they can pretend all that they want, that they can have control over the masses when they finally get into the streets. But as we all know, we're going to get there no matter what. We're going to be out there in force. We're going to be sending a really strong message to the rest of the world. And there may be a political battle ahead of us. We may uh, be putting together press releases or having a press conference or something, but we need to discuss how absolutely outrageously, I mean, I don't know the right word to use here, but absolutely totalitarian way of trying to stifle dissent and stifle like free speech or, or any kind of like political speech right now at this critical juncture in time. The TV networks would absolutely love it if all that you had on television were just a bunch of white children and white parents standing around a barbecue with an American flag, you know, and just so proud and happy that America is theirs again. But we're going to be there in droves to tell them that is definitely not the case. So. Anyway, thank you so much for having me.